Hi everyone, we're just uh, welcome. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes, see, uh, wait for some stragglers to turn up, and then uh, we'll kick off in a couple of minutes. So uh, it'll go quiet for a minute, and then I'll be back on. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, kick off. Um, so, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us. Um, this is uh, one of the first of a few uh, seminars we're running. Um, just going through uh, Enfon and Nivola, our relationship, and uh, the value that you can gain from becoming uh, an Enfon partner um, and joining the the exciting ride that is happening at the moment in the cloud world. Um, we've got a slightly different spin on it compared to what is happening out there with some of the other vendors. Um, so, speakers today, I'm Michael Lloyd um, uh, from Nivola, the MD. Um, is, we've got Paul Sparks talking. Um, Steve and Ray are, are not talking, but um, uh, we've got Rob Bacon who will be uh, going through the technical side of things. Apologise to Rob, his name didn't get up in lights. Um, Paul looks art works with us um, for Enfon, developing the, the uh, channel, um, uh, giving support to partners, joy, uh, engaging with Enfon and Avola um, in terms of marketing, sales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But Paul can go into a bit more detail on that in a minute. First of all, I'm just going to uh, talk a little bit about um, who Nivola are. Um, we, as a business, been going ten years now. We are very focused on value added, um, and a lot of people throw that out there. But for us, it's all about understanding technology and delivering services around it on the in the distribution side of things. Um, so we've got five um, divisions. Um, the first division, which is where um, is the TAS side of things, which is where Enfon. You can see we've got a number of other partners, but Enfon, we in terms of wholesale, is our prime product there. Um, and we have a very, very close relationship. You've got the other um, vendors you probably recognize as well as Nice in Contact, which is a uh, obviously the, the contact center side of things. Um, we also have uh, intelligent networking. Intelligent networking is um, all about understanding the delivery mechanism of voice or data. Um, and that includes network monitoring, includes gateways, um, it includes um, SBC, so session border controls, um, and also uh, TAPS, which in effect is if you uh, do some what if scenarios on your data network, the TAP will take the information um, and put it into a uh, format and an explanation of what, how, what, how your uh, packets are traveling around your network and tells you what you need to do, or what you don't need to do. Um, it's obviously very key when you're delivering voice, certainly over, over a wide area network now. Um, you see, this is our traditional, this is the on-premise side of things. Um, you can see there's some very familiar names there. It's something that we've uh, historically started with 10 years, and as you can imagine, we're now 
transitioning and we have a hybrid uh, portfolio I would suggest um, some traditional names some names you might not recognize like Varela and Braxtel which are very focused on the uh, contact side of things um, and then we've got some SIP endpoints such as Fanville and Digium which um, again are related to the cloud side of things but also work with a lot of uh, UC vendors. We see hybrid is a, a key product moving forward, a key solution that a lot of people are looking at. Um, so it's a, it's a big part of our portfolio. Like I said, um, we deliver services. So we have um, 15 engineers around the, the country which deliver services around all the products we sell. Um, as you can see, Enfon again are in there. So when uh, you sign up to working with us as a partner, it, there's no investment required. We will deliver the services for you, we'll um, do surveys, we'll deliver on-site, we'll do um, discovery, all the bits that potentially it could be quite an investment to get uh, started on a new vendor. So we take that problem away from you and work with you to ensure that you can deliver that professional solution. And then finally, we've got meeting room solutions. This is something that is becoming quite prominent nowadays um, with, and certainly before the, uh, the pandemic, a lot of people were looking at making sure that they have good interactive meeting room solution and it's not gone to the days of just having a bit of video and a bit of sound it's now about interactive screens it's about making sure you can scare, share that information with someone who might be remote um, and also it's it's become wireless so all our solutions are, are wire free apart from power and uh, again that's important certainly to make the setup very easy if someone walks into the room um, Ava, a very large player in the sound bars and video side of things. Um, I3 technologies are very, very large when it comes to um, interactive screens, which again is something uh, that we see as a big future. And finally, we have just started uh, distributing Poly as well. So again, we have all the packages that uh, come together. And you'll see that when we talk about the Enfon, they've got a very, very solid solution when it comes to integration with Teams. All the products we have around the meeting room solutions obviously work with the team solutions uh, as well. So it's it's all very key. And the, the whole point of what our divisions is that they actually all are intrinsically linked. So each solution is there for a reason to build this picture. And what we try and do is, is give our resellers opportunities to go back into their existing customers, new customers and say, right, okay, um, you've got the Enfon cloud. Um, do you want to look at meeting room solutions? Or, um, you know, you look to your network, are you going to be running voice over it? Let's come in with an Enfon solution. So we, we have a number of products. And again, we undermine that with services that we could deliver. So today, obviously, we're talking about Enfon. Um, like I say, they're one of our premium partners uh, we, uh, we work with um, and very key to us and key to our success, which is uh, very, very important. Um, so if you need to know anything more about the other products uh, and bits and pieces, please let us know. I'm now going to uh, palm myself off to, uh, to Katrina, who's going to pass us with Paul. Pass us over to Paul. Thank you. Paul, Katrina. I've just, just passed over to you, Paul, if you'd Fantastic. like to present your screen. Brilliant. Okay, great stuff. Well, um, Thank you everybody for joining the call. My name is Paul Sparks. I'm the UK distribution manager at, at, at Enfon. Um, what, what I'd like to do really is to, um, oh, let me just, just get used to these controls. Katrina, <laughs> up and down, oh, there we go. Right, yeah, so um, th the objectives from today's call, what I'd like you to do really is, is come away with a greater understanding of, of what Enfon do. You may have seen us, uh, you, you may have come across us in the past, you might have used us in the past, uh, you may just see our, our marketing that, that is uh, posted on, on LinkedIn. So um, what I'd, I'd like you to come away with is a greater understanding of who are Enfon, what do they do, where we've done it before, um, our marketing position. So where do we fit into the UK market? Our core capabilities, so the core platform and then the value added services. Cloudia, so we are Enfon. Enfon is the organization. Our cloud telephony platform is called Cloudia. Um, I'd like to talk to you about the, the native Cloudia applications. 
and then our direct routing, um, Teams integration, and uh, the ecosystem that sits around that as well. Partner program. So we have a, a, an award-winning partner program. Uh, I'll take you through what's in it for the partner. And then the onboarding. So our onboarding process is a cradle to grave process. Uh, it works very well. And then finally, what's in it for you, the partner? So what are the commercials and how much money are you gonna make? So just a bit about us really. So uh, Enfon, so we, we, were, uh, we were created in 2007 in Germany. That's where our head office is. Um, we are currently in 15 countries, so our main focus and, uh, is, is in the European region. So we've got a footprint in 15 countries. We're looking to expand that footprint as well. Uh, we ultimately would like world domination, but for the moment, the focus is Europe, and we're looking to be the largest cloud telephony provider in the region. So us as an organization, we grew to a certain size. Um, we took it to that certain size and then uh, to take it on to the next stage, we had two options. It was either be acquired, um, which we didn't really fancy doing that because we built the brand. Um, so what we did was then go out to the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and we had an IPO in 2018. Through that IPO, we raised a significant war chest. So that enabled us to then uh, invest that those funds back into the platform through R&D and also um, uh, focus on growth. So growth of the organization and building out the brand further. So in regards to yourselves and your valued customers, um, you know, the really, you know, the due diligence they're looking to do is, right, who are these guys? Are they going to be around in five years? Uh, you know, where have they done it before? So, you know, currently, we've got just under half a million users on the platform. So it shows you the scale that we've got. And we deal with um, just under 41,000 uh, 4, organizations. So what's our strategy? So the strategy uh, is split, split into five pillars. So increase, so it's increases making the most of what we've got. So part of that, that the fund that we raised through the IPO is to, is to build out um, in existing territories that we're in all, already uh, to, to work with the existing partners there and grow organically. Um, we're looking to transform as well. So as I said, um, some of those funds that we've raised will go back in, go into transformation of the product, adding additional features and increasing you know, the ARPU, you know, our ARPU and our partners' ARPU open so um what we're looking to do as well is build out uh, increase our ecosystem so build out the apis on our platform so we can integrate into the best of breed technologies that are out there on the market expand so as i mentioned we're looking to uh, expand our footprint in the european region so 15 countries currently but we're looking to uh, to to add to that and then finally, if I could move this little icon out the way, uh, we've got um, we've got a consolidation. So we're looking to grow through consolidation. If I can get this slide to work, there we go. So you can't see that. I don't know how to get rid of this box in the right-hand corner, but um, yeah, there's there's market fragmentation at the moment. So we're looking to grow through. Um, organically but we're also looking to grow through acquisition so we are in funny times at the moment and uh, there'll be a lot of consolidation on the market we're you know financially we're in a pretty good place so we're looking to grow through you know acquisition and uh, you know not just of of bases but also of uh, technology organizations out there that would uh, integrate well into our platform so where do we fit into the UK market? So we know that you know 99% uh, of businesses out there in the UK market classed as SME and they're sub 250 users. And then 1% is, uh, is mid to large enterprise. So 250 users and above. So where does Enfon fit into that? So Enfon 
you know, we we fit in all areas. Most of our orders that we get get um, get through the door are sub twenty seats, but we can, you know, it's a multi-tenanted platform that we've got, so we can flex up from one user right through to two hundred and fifty thousand users. So um, our largest deployment in the UK is seven and a half thousand users. So we can fit into all areas. You know, the opportunity for you guys, um, the, the last year's Cavell report um, said that by the, by the year 2024, that the um, UK cloud telephony um, marketplace will increase basically by uh, uh, one, you know, 100%. So that would be uh, uh, up to 10 million seats uh, people uh, uh, in the UK. So, um, you know, that's a big opportunity for you guys. So as I as I mentioned, uh, you know we fit into large enterprise. We you know we work very well in SME and uh, mid. So um, yeah, I've just given you some examples there of some of our partners and some of our customers. So just a couple that I'd I'd like to highlight. So we've got Hackney Borough Council. Now Hackney Borough Council is is the uh, the one that I talked about earlier, which is seven and a half thousand users. They're using us purely for voice at the moment and omni-channel contact center. So um, you know that's it, it. Just shows really our capability at that large enterprise um, uh, part of the market. And then we've got LNQ. So LNQ, London and Quadrant Housing Association, uh, just under four and a half thousand users. But this is our poster boy deployment at the moment um, that is uh, using uh, Envoys for Teams, so our Teams direct routing, as well as contact center. So they, they've opened up some additional channels on their, their contact center, so they've got an omni-channel contact center. So, you know, we've got a really good story there in uh, large enterprise, uh, you know, all the way down to SME. So then in regards to our capabilities, so our capabilities, we've, you know, we've got um, our infrastructure is over in Germany. So we've got two, uh, two data centers. We're in Munich and we're in Nuremberg. So there um, it, we've got a multi-tenanted platform. So um, it, it's a highly available platform that's load balanced. It never has more than 50% load on either infrastructure. Um, our licensing models, are, which I'll, I'll talk you through in just a moment, uh, you know, simple licensing op options, we've got two, two offerings. And then, um, you know, this is a, a public facing solution. So um, it's, there's no VPN required, it's not a private facing solution. So will it work over the internet? Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, with our devices, we can uh, provision them and send them straight out to to site. So it's just uh, you know easy to provision, and it's just a plug and play solution. Don't know if you can see the box there, but uh, we've got uh, you know as part of this, as you see more and more cloud solutions being uh, launched onto the market, a lot of the functionality seems to be dropping off. So you don't seem to be getting the full feature set that you used to get. Uh, on um, your traditional cloud, cloud, well, your traditional uh, PBX. You know, with our platform, we have over 150 features. You know, that can be, uh, you know, advanced call routing and skill-based routing. So, you know, we've got a full enterprise stack of features on our platform. Everything's sold on an OPEX model, so it's just a, a cost per user per month. And I suppose, um, uh, you know, one of our, our key selling points at the moment to our partner community yeah. is that we only sell through through partners and distribution. So we don't have a direct arm. So we're not really confused about what we are, direct or channel. We only sell through channel. So that means you as the partner will never come up against us in, in an opportunity where we'd be selling direct you know, and uh, be a direct competition against yourselves. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, we've got 150 plus features. Um, we do, um, you know, we do, we have our own, um, we have our, our own um, uh, mobile clients, but as well as integrating into Teams. 
We have uh, comprehensive call recording, so that could be for our, our Cloudia platform, but also we can now do, which I've got a slide towards the end, uh, we can now do call recording on Teams. Not just Teams breaking out onto the PSTM, but Teams to Teams call recording. Uh, we have feature-rich call monitoring. So as organizations are, are, are you know, have sent workers home, uh, so a lot more uh, people working from home and flexible working, um, uh, you know, how do you manage that? Do you, how can you have a holistic view uh, of, of activity on the platform? So we have a halfway house really between, um, between contact center and just basic call logging, uh, which is our end monitoring queues, uh, which we will be doing a short demo on at the end of this presentation. CTI, so uh, integration, so uh, cloud telephony integration, uh, sorry, computer telephony integration. So um, yeah, so we can integrate into your uh, CRM or any sort of database uh, that you may be running. Cloud contact center, which I mentioned, so we can do voice or we can do omnichannel. And then we have a uh, Microsoft uh, Teams direct routing, um, which I've got a slide on really just to tell you how we do that. So in regards to us, um, so we have we have two licensing models, yeah? So uh, our standard licensing model is our entry level licensing model. This RRP is at around four pound per user per month. Now this just, um, this just um, connects to a single device and that would be a, a handset on the desk, uh, but it also sees Teams as a single device. So even though on your Teams client, you can log into up to five different devices, um, you, you know, um, the business standard would be sufficient. So if somebody rings your DDI, it rings all of your, all five of your, uh, um, your um, Teams uh, clients. With that as well, that's SRTP encrypted. Then we have our business premium. So with business premium, um, all of the same functionality that you get on business standard, uh, um, but you can log into up to nine different devices. That means if one of those devices is Teams and Teams ever goes down, and we know that it does, uh, I think there was an example uh, a few months ago where someone didn't upgrade the SSL certificate and it took Teams down in, uh, in the UK and uh, some of East Coast America. So all you have to do for business continuity is, is log into one of your other devices and you can continue to work as normal. With that as well, you get a basic call recording. So this is just initiated by pressing a, a star one, just a star key code, and that will um, record the call and then just email that call across. So it's very basic call recording, but it's just a nice little add-on to have on the premium license. Once again, SRTP encrypted. What I can say with our licenses as well, so, um, so with some of our competitors, you would buy the license and then the additional features, whether it's for IVR or any other type of uh, advanced uh, call routing uh, type activities that would need to be done on that license, there's no additional charge. So in our licensing uh, uh, options, that comes with everything. Yeah, so you could set up multi-layered IVRs, um, and there'd be no extra cost for that. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got Enfon. So we are Enfon and our cloud telephony platform is Cloudia. So we have our own Cloudia soft client and mobility apps. It's the same user experience, whether you're using, uh, you know, it's, um, device or operating system agnostic. So you're getting that same user experience no matter what platform you're using. And then Teams. So um, Microsoft Teams, lots of activity I see on uh, LinkedIn at the moment. Everybody seems to have their, their own uh, uh, take on how they're doing direct routing through Teams. So um, what we do, um, we're not looking to uh, replace the Microsoft um, cloud phone system. What we do is enhance it. So there are different offerings on the market. Some could be where it's just there's a there's an icon embedded um, in the Teams, um, or, you know, where the cloud phone system dial pad would be, and that would be a third party 
who, who has embedded their, their own uh, um, client there and you click it and it opens their dial pad. Um, and there's other offerings out there where there is just direct routing, but it's zip trunks breaking directly uh, uh, out over a third party's uh, zip trunks, basically. Uh, sorry, the cloud phone system would have uh, third party zip, zip trunks attached. So just keeping the cost down. So the way we do it is different. Um, so we um, we connect directly into the Microsoft cloud phone system. That enables us or the end user to reap the benefits from uh, the power of Teams and all the functionality within Teams. Um, but then they would also get the enterprise grade um, telephony features and resilience that you find on our platform so that the customer's getting best of both worlds. So what, what you're getting really, and my colleague Rob will be doing a demonstration on this in just a moment, you get, um, you know, it, it's a completely native look and feel. And then the call recording. So this is going to be a big push for us. We're just about to launch this. So this is uh, enterprise call recording uh, that um, that is also sell, sold on a uh, wholesale model. Um, it gives a completely native experience like our platform. Uh, so the the call recording stats, um, the the way it connects into Teams, and that the the, um, the storage of the recordings is 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 actually held in Azure. And then you know as um, as a user, you can set up where. Uh, those recordings are stored. So you can nominate which data centers within Azure that those recordings would be kept. Uh, in regards to compliance, it's you know PCI compliant, MIFID 2, GDPR. And uh, you know, uh, in regards to analytics and some of the advanced enterprise features that you would expect on enterprise call recording, you know, you can have transcriptions that, that can be captured and then and then um and then uh, integrated into your CRM platform, capturing the uh, um, or documenting the call. We provide a, a wide range of range of endpoints. Um, we provide uh, Yealink, Polycom. Um, so these are our our approved devices. Anything that sits outside this, so Yealink, Poly, Gigaset, Schnom, and Panasonic. Anything that sits outside of that potentially will work it's just an unsupported SIP device on our platform um, for headsets yeah we focus on um, Sennheiser Plantronics and we're just about to add Jabra on there as well and then for collaboration there's the the uh, the i3 um, kit over at uh, Novola and we also provide Polycom and then our uh, onboarding um, uh, our partner program so with our partner program, you would get access to our community portal. So that is the central hub uh, where lots and lots of different uh, pieces of information around the products are held. On there is our uh, sales academy. So this is all modular and we have a foundation course which then leads on to other courses depending on what direction you want to go off into. So um, a foundation course would get, give you an awareness of the product. And you know, salespeople can take that, and engineers would uh, be able to take that as well. Then that leads on to uh, other areas. That is the prerequisite for engineers then to uh, go on and take our certified admin courses, which then give you uh, a greater knowledge on how to build a solution. Our marketing support is, uh, you know, we've got a really, really active and powerful uh, um, marketing message. Uh, our marketing teams, as I said, are very active. Uh, you know, and we can provide lots and lots of collateral. Uh, we can also help build out with one of our marketing exec executives. Um, we would help uh, help you um, build out a a marketing and business plan, to and then understand who you want to go after, how you would want to go after them, whether it's a specific vertical that you're uh, successful in, and uh, you know we can help support that through through MDF. We also can provide like campaigns in a box. Um, you know, focusing on those verticals or events in the box once we go back to uh, go, going back to events, basically. Uh, uh, business support. So, you know, um, we have uh, sales development funds. Uh, we also have, you know, a, a bid team. 
we've got a, a public sector strategy. So if you are in any frameworks, we can help you. We can support you in that. Uh, and, you know, and there is access to special pricing. You know, uh, if you are working on a, a specific tender that we uh, we are involved in. And then the roadmap for success. So this is our uh, onboarding process. So that you know, it's just uh, these are all the touch points. But that takes you basically through from uh, the initial meeting, signing our NDA and and uh, master partner agreement, right through to booking the training on our uh, on our academy, um, building out the uh, marketing plan and business plans. And then right through to pipeline and delivery. So we can take you on that full journey. And then what's in it for you? So um, our, um, uh, yeah, so so with Navola, they can offer flexible models. So, you know, I think 35% is, you know, is is a great discount basically for, uh, for wholesale and, um, just bring these down so we can give you industry leading margins yeah um, we are a channel only organization we have flexible operating models through Navola so they can offer you uh, where you can bill it yourself and they will send out a CDR or they can offer white label billing um, we offer comprehensive marketing support End user leads, so that's something that we've just started. So the quality of the leads that have been coming through have been excellent. So the feedback from our partners have been great. Um, zero cost of entry. So um, the um, you know the the training, all of the onboarding, uh, there's no cost for that. You have a dedicated account manager, and we have our enjoy incentive. So our enjoy incentive is um, a, a uh, um, point you just register on our portal and it's just points make prizes so um, th this goes re down really well with our, our salespeople so that could be a race day right through to gadgets and perfumes um, so you know I think it's a pretty powerful message and uh, yeah I'd uh, invite any questions at the end but I'd just like to hand over now to my colleague Rob Bacon who will do a demonstration of our Cloudio platform, our Teams integration, and end monitoring queues. Over to you, Rob. Thank you very much. Uh, can everybody see the correct screen where it's showing the Cloudio login? Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Paul. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for everybody joining today. I um, hope everybody as well. Um, so I'll show you three um, three applications today. First one I'll show you is our Cloudia native app. Um, now, the Cloudia application is available on WebRTC as a desktop client that you can download to install. And then there's also the mobile app for iOS and for Android. All of the applications have the same look, the same feel, so everything will be the same no matter what uh, device your staff member is using. So login is relatively simple. You just log in with the email address and with the password. You go to the web address, which is start.cloudio.com. So as you can see, it's just a web application that I'm using, so you can use it anywhere. As long as you have an internet connection and a, and a web address and a browser if you're using it on a PC or on a Mac. So upon logging in, here you'll straight away you'll just see that the phone um, is all ready to go. So at the top here you have your name. So your name there will be just for you just to understand that that's who you've logged in as. That's the application, um, your extension number. Now here gives you a different options of where you want the call to be distributed. So yes you can use the app but you can say, I want to use the app, but still want to use the desk phone. So your desk phone will, will make the call rather than running it through the application. So you still have the ability to look up the contacts and speed dials and things. Or you can say, no, I want you to call me on my home phone. So again, this is giving your staff the ability in order to make a call and receive a call no matter what location that they're at. So as you can see here, I've got some speed dials through here. So you can log on to your queues. 
um, you can simply sort of double click um, to log on or you can drag and drop the call and just make the call. Firstly, what I just need to do is just remove some of these, refresh. There you go. Okay. So now if you want to log in, you'll just simply double click and it just tells you the agent's logged in. So now I'm ready, I'm signed in of my queue. So all of these here are completely um, definable by your member of staff, or you can actually set this up in the administration portal. So at the top here, you can either do a search. So the search is a universal. So what I mean by that, for instance, if I do Rob, it will search for everything in my, pri in my contacts. This is my private contact if there's any extensions, faxes, conferences, or groups. So you can search for anybody and where you like. So for instance, here it's found me. I can click on the information and it's telling me that's my mobile number. So I can click on there. It then dials my number and that's how quickly it rings. So it's rung, I've answered the call. Control everything. Let's hang that call up. So it's very quick um, to make the call and then that's where you control everything through there. The user has the ability to create call forwarding profiles. So what we mean by that is depending on your location, whether you're going on a lunch or a lunch break or a comfort break, what do you want to do if somebody calls your extension? So I can say I'm going out for lunch and then that activates the call forwarding profile. You get a little indication there just to say the profile has been activated. So if anybody calls my direct dial, what will happen is it will forward my call to somebody else's extension or whatever I've set up. That's my profile. Here I've got do not disturb. I can turn the ringer on and off. And in here you can define where you want the audio to go. So some people may have different um, headsets depending on what they're working on or if they in the office and the member of staff still wants their phone to be ringing through their laptop so it's loud so you can say ring the uh, ringtone entities through my speakers rather than going through my headset so that way you'll be able to hear what's going on so if i was to make a call within my speed dial here i've got multiple ways of doing it so i can right click and i can call by app and that makes the call i can drag and drop the call and again, that makes the call straight away. Or I can um, double click on the call and then that makes the call as well. So again, we're giving you the ability to work whatever way that you feel comfortable. So yes, you have three different ways, but you can always just pick and choose. To be honest, I normally just double click um, very quickly. Also, if you are receiving a lot of incoming calls, you can just hide, um, hide the keypad. So there you'll be able just to see all of your speed dials. So whatever is replicated on here gets replicated on every other device that you sign into as well as your desk, uh, your desk phones as well. So no matter what device you're using, it's always the same. It's always the same look and feel. So nothing's going to be changing. Your history tab will show you all of your calls that you've received on your extension. So no matter what device you've used, again, um, depending on how you're working, you will always be able to see all of your calls and your missed calls, how they came through and everything else. As you can see, this person came through to an IVR that was created on the platform. If you do not have voicemail to email enabled, you can have voicemails visually on here. Contacts, again, these are all of your extensions that are under your customer's account. And you can also upload a corporate directory where the member of staff doesn't have the ability to edit the corporate directory, but they have the ability to create their own private phone book. So here you can say private or global, so I'll do private. So here I've got Paul's, uh, Paul's mobile number, but again, I can add my own number as well. So I can put wife uh, and then do 666 for instance. So that's her number and then I'll do save. So now I've got the wife's uh, number all up and running. Also with the um, platform you have um, conference services so they are free of charge. You can create as many of these as you like. They do say you can have up to 50 participants but again it's just depending on your internet connection or your bandwidth. So again you, if you are 
a member of a conference that you join on a regular basis, you can subscribe to them. So when you go to start the conference, you will literally just uh, double click the conference. And there you join the conference, it remembers your pin, and then you can invite people, mute them, um, kick them out and things like that. So it's a full conference suite, which is embedded within the Cloudia platform. You also have the ability to see faxes, send faxes and things like that. So everything is ready for you just to, depending on what you want to do within this device here. Under the settings section is where you can define your primary device. So for instance, your primary device is where you're gonna get a ring from if you're a member of a queue, a skill, a hunt group, whatever terminology you'd like to use. Um, but if someone calls your DDI, everything will ring. So it will ring your Teams client, if you sign into Teams, your mobile app, your desk phone, things like that. So the user has the ability to drill down completely on what they want to do with their extension. So for instance, this here is saying a parallel ring. So when this person rings, also call Thomas Edison. We'll just turn that off. But we can also make um, another extension ring at the same time. We can make another mobile number ring at the same time. So for instance, if you want somebody else's mobile to ring, you just put a mobile number in there for select, then that number will ring at the same time. Um, so that's it mainly for the, the, the native app. It's very intuitive, um, it's nice and simple, it's very easy to use, and no matter what platform you are using, um, it's always using the same look, the same feel. So uh, let's just do that. So what I'll do now is I'll show you our, uh, our native Teams application. So Teams with us, we use the direct routing. So it's all done with PowerShell scripts and so we'll train you on how this can all be done, but nothing is changing within the Teams application at all. So it all has the same look, the same feel of the way that your staff are currently using Teams at the moment. But all that happens is, as Paul showed in his slide earlier, is that this keypad here is communicating with the Enform platform. So just look at this as a keypad sitting and on your desk phone. So whatever you can do with your desk phone, you can do with this. So what I mean by that is I can dial star codes. So you just dial star five five, so that's our star code. And then I just got a message in my ear to say it's activated. This is my primary device. So the way that we see this is a device. So it's a device for you to make a call, to receive a call internally and externally. So what I mean by that is you have extension to extension dialing. So if I dial 1001, then what happens there is that it will should have called Nikola Tesla, but he's probably got the app on. Yeah. Cool. So you have extension to extension dialing as well as dialing direct dials and things like that, as well as being members of a queue and of a skill. So what I mean by that is if at the moment Stephen Hawkins on do not disturb, I'll put him down as available. If you make a call in to a queue or a, like for instance, a call is now coming into Stephen Hawking. If you give it a, a second, you now have a notification here to say that somebody's come through on a, on a queue, which is the inventor's queue and that's the mobile number. So I've now answered that call and it's all, again, it's all working through Teams. find somebody who is now going to be able to take the call. So again, I can now um, resume it, transfer it, and things like that. So you still get the full use of a, of a traditional um, telephone device, but everything is just done within the Teams client. So you can consult transfer. So for instance, if I go to put this through to Nikola Tesla, it's telling me that he's not signed in, but I can dial his extension, do consult, it will then call his extension, and then that way I'll be able to answer the phone. So again, you control the, 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 the call all within the Teams client, 
you don't install anything um, it's all native integration so everything that you do within here is is done uh, without the, the separate install of additional application um, so whilst we're also on the sort of like how you make a call and receive a call we also have an application which is called end monitoring queues so end monitoring queues does exactly what it says it monitors activity and those within a queue and those within a skill so it's a reporting tool so the way that it will work is is that the user needs to be a member of a queue or a skill in order for us to retain or sorry to obtain their reports so their calls what they've done for the day so here is saying, what do you want to find a report on? So I'm going to say, show me all queues and show me everything in regards to those queues. So I will say, show me what's happened for the last 90 days, for instance. So then what happens there is it will pull off all of my queues and my skills that I am now going to be reporting on. It says it's going to be reporting from the month of May to August. And since those time periods, we've had 78 calls. 43 were answered and 35 are unanswered. So remember, we're also taking into the equation of outbound calls as well. So it's all of the calls in and out. So here is telling me I've got a ratio of 55.1% of my calls being answered and 449 So that's, if you're running sort of like a, a little call center, that's, that's not a good statistic to have a look at. But here we'll tell you with all of your calls, what's happened. So all calls have been answered, so those are 43 calls. Your average call length, your minimum call length, and your maximum. So the maximum call length was three minutes and 37 seconds. What is your average call wait time? So again, your maximum wait time was 44 seconds and your minimum was one. So that's not bad. But again, your coverage is only telling you 53.5%. And again, it breaks it down to who is your busiest agent. So as you can see, Tesla's answered 29 calls, which means he's answered 67.4% of calls coming and uh, outgoing within sort of like this little mini call center. Here you can set up a service level agreement as well. So what this is saying is how many calls were answered within 16 seconds? So this is saying 34 calls, which means 79.1% of your calls are being answered within 16. Six more within 32 so that's 93 so 100 percent of your calls are being answered within 48 seconds which is perfect down here is saying who's disconnecting so the agent here disconnected 15 times and a caller 27. one call was transferred so again this could now take into the equation who's transferred that call so this is just saying a skill done that so if you had an extension or a user transferring numerous calls, it could be they are a receptionist, so they're used to transferring loads of calls. That person is either in the wrong skill or your IVR is created wrong, or that person just needs a bit more training in regards to the skill or the queue that they're in. So it's given you an insight of what's actually happening with some of your agents and whether they actually need some training. Here is telling you what your busiest skill or your busiest queue is. So you can see 20 calls came into the inventors, 20 came into the outbound, so 20 outbound calls. And the direction that they go through in there, your queue position. So again, we've had uh, your average queue position is one. So where this is a demo account, it's only normally me calling in. But apparently this will measure about 180 different metrics. So some of the ones that I'll show you, so you, at the top here, you've got answered in detailed. So as you scroll down, it's giving you the date and the time that the calls come in, whether it was an inbound or outbound, how long that person waited for, so six seconds, and the duration, which was 19 seconds, and who disconnected, which was the agent, and it was handled by Stephen Hawkins. So again, I've done all of these calls um, on the 18th and things like that. So the further you go down, because it's going back into three months, here you've got the unanswered detailed. So this is telling you who is calling in and how long are they calling in. So here we've got a call came in at 9.27 on the 4th of June. That was the caller. They came into the inventors queue and they hung up 
because they waited seven seconds, but they were in the position one when they actually come in. So again, the whole time's not too bad and they're hanging up after seven seconds. But if you have a look, again, this person came into the inventor's queue and they hung up after 26 seconds. As well as that, as the inbound, it's telling you what's happening on the outbound as well. So here it's saying that Nikola Tesla's done three calls, but he only waited three seconds, two seconds, one second, and then he hung the call up. So if, for instance, somebody's saying, oh, I've done so many outbound calls today, you can say, okay, let's have a check. Um, you can say, all right, yeah, but that rung for one second, two seconds, three seconds. So it gives you the information of what's happening. And as you can see through here, I can send that as a link for somebody, download that as an Excel file, or I can download it as a PDF. The other one we can look at is hour. So when are your busiest hours within your call center or within your organization? So here you've got your answered call distribution per hour. So how many calls are being answered in, the, in this hour? So as you can scroll down, here you can see nine calls came in between 9.30 and 9.45, which means 20.9% of your calls um, but the average is six seconds of the call time, minimum was one, and the maximum was 15 seconds. So it will give you a bit more of an insight to say, when are my busiest periods within my organization? Can people go on a lunch between one and two, or is that where my most busiest time is? And it, go, it breaks it down in all 15 minute increments. Here will tell you your answered call wait time. So how long are people waiting before their call is being answered? So you can see here, you've got your average, your minimum and your maximum. So the highest average that I can see here are these two or three, 13 or 28 seconds here. So three calls came in between 11.45 and 12, which is only 7% of your calls. But the average wait time of those three calls was 28. So again, if, if it's not too bad, then you don't really need to worry. But again, it gives you more of an understanding of how long people are waiting before the calls are being answered. And how long people are waiting before they give up and hang up the call. So again, it breaks it down in more increments. So you can say, hold on a moment. Three calls came in at quarter to eight, but I only opened at nine o'clock. So again, you can then look at whether you need to start creating time controls, which again are included in the platform to say, open and close the system automatically between nine and five or so on. Or I can now tell my agents, right, make sure you sign out of your queues or your skills before you leave because people are still coming in. So they waited 21 seconds as an average before they decided to hang up. So again, it gives you more insight of what's happening within your in your organization and if your agents are logging in and logging out it gives you the agent information so it will tell you how many times somebody's logging in and logging out and as you can see i am a devil because i don't sign in and out so it's saying my average second uh, session is 2146 hours 47 minutes and 11 seconds so if i was signing in and out of my skills correctly as i done today it will then tell me how many times I've signed in and out. Um, we can't report on the reason for someone signing in and out with this application. That's when we start moving more in towards contact centers and things like that. So from a reporting tool, there's a lot of information there that you can report on. You can schedule these reports to be sent on a daily basis, a 15 minute basis if you need it to. So it's all live data that's being reported on. So that's what it looks like from a reporting side from a supervisor so if an agent wanted to see their own reports again you can grant them access because we don't charge per login with this you're getting charged per person you're monitoring so you can have unlimited number of supervisors the agents can all log in and see their own reports and an administrator can sign in and, and create sort of um, schedule reports and things like that so an agent can sign in, see their own reports for their own person, and then see how well they're doing. As well as getting the reporting element, so you have a custom report section as well, you have unlimited wallboards. So there are some wallboards that are out the box, so we have agents and queues, but this is one 
that I've uh, just basically created for um, for demoing purposes and things like that. So again, here we'll tell you, um, you can put uh, images on, who's ready for receiving a call, how many agents are ready, uh, how many calls have been answered today, if there's any lost calls, lost calls percentage and things like that. So that, again, this is all working with, with live and real data. And again, you can create different wall boards that it will scroll through on a um, 15 minute, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, things like that. And again, if you just want two big um, statistics showing on the screen, then you can do that. And where it's all web-based, you can just put images, you can move things over. So here we've got the live agents, uh, live queue information, and again, you've got lost calls. So again, you can drag and drop and move these wherever you'd like to, and then just click save. He will make this URL shareable. So what we mean by that is, is that you can give this URL to the managing director or somebody who's not based in the office, and then they can log on to the URL and just see the wallboard only. So again, you're not limited for where you are going to be accessing this. It doesn't matter where you are. Um, you can just share the URL and this will all be locked. So they won't be able to drag and drop things because it will all be locked. But again, there's a lot of information that you can show. It's all graphical, it's all color. So you, here you can just say, what do you want to add? So I'll say, I want to add uh, some information on, um, on how many agents are ready. So again, you just click on that and it adds it through here. So now you can say, if the agent ready goes under um, two, go yellow, and if it's under one, go red, and show me on all of the queues. So again, that's now gonna show as orange because there's only one person in, but again, you can just say one, and now it's gone blue. So again, you can create this for however you want it to. You can create, um, different colors and things like that. So it's all it's all usable for how you want it to look and to feel. And again, that doesn't cost anything. And you can create as many wallboards as you like. So again, this is just another wall that, uh, that we was creating earlier as well. So let's go back because here. Um, there's a panel right there. There we go, that's what I want to click on the X. So again, custom wallboard, uh, custom reporting, you have a supervisor who can start real-time monitoring. So we can just say how many agents are signed in, what are they currently doing, how many are on a call, how many calls are coming in, so how many calls are being processed and things like that. So from a supervisor side, they can see all of what their agents are doing who's signed in and who's not signed in. That's it really from the M monitoring queue side. Um, so we've gone through the Cloudia replication, so we'll be able to see who's on the phone, who's not on the phone, um, drag and drop to make calls. We've gone through the um, Envoice for Teams application, so have extension to extension dialing, speed dialing, star codes, um, and you are still members of queues and skills. So this here is communicating with the MFON PBX and breaking out through the PSTN. And then we've got the M monitoring queues section where it monitors activity within queues and skills and the agents within them. That's it from me. I am happy to take any questions or go into more depth on a certain um, feature if anybody has any questions. Thank you. I do have some questions that have come in, Rob, um, and uh, I guess I can just fire them across to you, Mike and Paul, and then maybe you can decide uh, who wishes to answer which questions. Is, is that okay with everyone? Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Good, yeah, sure. okay. So first question I've got is the premium license cost. What is the premium license cost? The RRP is seven pounds on the premium license. 
Okay, that was very easy and straightforward. Uh, yeah, we like those questions. Uh, next one is, oh, why would I choose wholesale over commission based? Um, well, I think it's it's what suits your your business really. Um, it's about do you want to own the the customer? Do you want to realise the revenues? Um, uh, you know, it's about valuing your business more. Own, you know, owning that customer, so you, you know, con controlling that relationship, or do you just want to pass it on to somebody else who will do all of that, and then you just get a kickback? So it's it's understanding what works for your business. You know, I think I think there is there's a big push in the UK um, through various vendors that have come from the states um, that you know the agency model works works well over there. Um, is the UK completely ready for that now? Um, I think you know a lot of organisations have, have built the business. They've always owned the customers, and um, it, it may be some time before they'd want to change that. So you know, most of the conversations I have are really around. I don't like being forced down a model, you know, down a route that that doesn't suit my business. So it just empowers empowers the partner. I think, uh, yeah. Paul, this is Michael. Just to, to add to that, um, at Navola we offer both commission and wholesale. So, uh, for example, Ring Central is very much commission, whereas the Enfon we see a lot of the partners, as as Paul says, this is the uh, commission has come from America where they have no choice. Um, it's all commission based over there. Whereas the UK, I think a lot of the value that our resellers give are not only in in technical but also account management and um, keeping close to the customers making sure they get what they want and keeping them um, uh, involved with the, the market market trends the risk obviously with commission only is that um, if you go to a commission only model then you will not as a reseller invoice the customer and as Paul says that will potentially um, devalue your business on the face of it and you know there's lots of ways of looking at these things and that is one of the biggest differences um, where people are very concerned that they should, would lose control um, because in effect that customer would be invoiced by an, a vendor rather than um, your own uh, company and some people feel uncomfortable at it and I think we are different to how the, the Americans work. Um, they've come over and potentially pushed this down a lot of people's throats um, and a lot of people are pushing back saying, well, hold on, we actually want to retain the customer. We want to make sure that we can see the true value. We want to uh, deliver services around it. Um, we want to add um, products to it, for example, meeting room stuff and all those bits and pieces, which then gives you that stickability. And you're not just one of another uh, hundreds or so resellers out there selling the same product. And you can differentiate yourself a bit better. So that's one of the, that's the key thing from a sales point of view, if you ask me. I think, I think um, as well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an organization, you know, whether a telco or MSP are going to have their own technical people, their own pre-sales guys, their own sales people. Um, so, you know, what do they do if you're just, you know, I think it, it works very well for your consultant type um, organization, whether it be a group of consultants or a single consultant comes across an opportunity, you know, is going in with the vendor, that would work very well. But if you've got your own technical guys, what do they do if you hand everything across to the uh, vendor? You want, okay, your own service um, wrap, you want your own service wrap around that. Yeah. I have, an, I have another question. Um, it says, do I retain control of my customers? Um, do you feel you've answered that question or do you want to unpack that a little bit more? Do I retain control of my customers? I think, uh, yeah, I think we, we you 100% do. You, you will, um, you'll receive an invoice from Nivola, um, a billing invoice, which you then can then invoice onto your customer. And retention is mainly whether you still invoice the customer, unfortunately. That, that's kind of the, the, the brass tacks around these kind of things. If you continue to invoice your customer, you will retain that customer as well, uh, and you'll be able to. It'll be harder for other partners or customers or competition, sorry, uh, to get in there if you still hold that. Um, whether it be a support contract, um, you can wrap a number of things around within the the cloud. So there'll be some licenses, but I would advise you wrap in some sort of support, which again makes it a lot more stickier. 
I have uh, one final question, um, which is is quite interesting. It says, uh, we use Ring Central. What are the advantages of changing to your service, and would it be possible to change without losing our phone numbers? Is that to, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you can port those numbers across. Um, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. You you can, you know, um, you can migrate across to our platform. That's that that isn't an issue. Um, I'll answer the uh, the advantages in on Paul. Very well, very well done, PC wise. Um, the the main the main advantage about Enfon over Ring Central, I think we just pointed it out. Um, two things. One is commission against wholesale. Um, so again, retaining the customer, etc. We've done that. I think the other thing is, as you probably can see in the market, you know, Ring Central are a wash, um, and I think. Again, having that uh, option, I think, it is very key. Um, Enfon, are, and I don't know whether Paul has mentioned this, but Enfon do not have thousands of partners out there. They want to get specific partners who are, will commit to Enfon, who will go through the partner program, will get some technical skills in-house, and then they will back them. Um, and some of the larger vendors out there um, want to basically just do it by numbers. Um, and, you know, if you've dealt with Cisco in the past, you know that's how they did it. You know, some would say successfully, but as from a reseller's point of view, your margin gets taken away and you become one of a load of, of, of partners. I think with Enfon, you will become quite um, niche, as in there aren't many out there. But as you can see from Rob's demo, they've got some really, really key products out there, true Teams integration, whether we like it or not, we can't get away from this Teams thing, and they have embraced it. Whereas a lot of partners out, vendors out there, have said they have embraced it, but when you delve down, you'll see they they haven't. They've gone so far, and then you pass off to Microsoft. Mm -hmm. then, we've had then, the sorry, sorry Michael. No, no, we've had the, the Teams integration for about eighteen months as well now. So we were one of the first to do the direct routing into uh, the Microsoft Teams platform. So it's tried, it's tested. We've actually got a deployment of the Teams integration for a large um, housing association for about 3,300 users. So we've got the, one of the largest deployments of the Microsoft Teams for voice um, in the UK, as far as I'm aware of. Okay, cheers. Okay, well, I think, uh, is that it, Katrina? Are we, uh, we done and dusted there in the question side of things? I think, I think we are on the question side yeah. of things. So we will be in contact yeah. with everyone. And if anybody wants to contact us, there's a name there, Joe Burleson uh, from Novola Distribution. So contact him or he will contact you. Great stuff. Well, thank you, everyone, for, for giving us your time. Um, keep an eye on, we'll, we, 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 we know webinars, there's, there's a lot of them around, but um, just keep an eye out. There might be one that specifically uh, suits you, your requirement, or gives you some uh, food for thought. So, uh, again, thank you, everyone, for coming, and uh, we'll hopefully speak to you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.